purposely. Your life, God's purpose. Listen at onpurposely.com. You were made on purpose for a purpose. Acts chapter 17 verses 26 and 27 say, From one man he made all the nations that they should inhabit the whole earth. And he marked out their appointed times in history and the boundaries of their lands. God did this so that they would seek him and perhaps reach out for him and find him, though he is not far from any one of us. So not only were we made on purpose for a purpose, but we were made for such a time as this. This is the time that you and I were appointed to live in. It's not on accident, like my kids used to say when they were little, that you're alive right now. God has a purpose for you at this point in history. And I don't think it's an accident that you're listening to the Bible for Busy People today. I'm Erica, and I'm so glad you're here. We are studying the life of Queen Esther. Over eight episodes. Why? Because it's so worth it. It's an incredible story about faith under fire and how our God is so faithful and has a plan for your life and for my life. Last time, Queen Esther, the new wife of King Xerxes the Great, received a disturbing message from her cousin Mordecai. He was more like a father to her. He raised her. And because he was Jewish, because of his faith, Mordecai refused to bow down to Haman, the king's right-hand man. And as a result, Haman had so much hatred in his heart that he decided I don't want to just destroy Mordecai's life. I want to kill all of the Jews. Haman went to King Xerxes, his boss, and sold him on the idea. It was terrible. But of course, King Xerxes didn't know that he was married to a Jew. Queen Esther was Jewish. And Mordecai wisely from the beginning said, do not tell anybody you're Jewish in the court, not even the king. So King Xerxes had no idea he had placed his wife in grave danger by signing that decree. Mordecai sent a message to Esther to beg the king for mercy for the Jewish people. Esther sent a message back, I almost picture text flying back and forth, don't you? And said, hey, if you don't get invited to stand before the king, you could be killed. Unless he raises his gold scepter, then you're fine. But it's like a huge risk for me to go stand before the king. She hadn't been called into his presence in 30 days. And I want to remind you of what Mordecai replied to Esther's message. We're picking it up in Esther chapter 4, verse 13. Don't think for a minute that because you're in the palace, you will escape when all other Jews are killed. If you keep quiet at a time like this, deliverance and relief For the Jews will arise from some other place, but you and your relatives will die. Who knows if perhaps you were made queen for just such a time as this. Then Esther sent this reply to Mordecai, go and gather together all the Jews of Susa and fast for me. Do not eat or drink for three days, night or day. My maids and I will do the same. And then though it is against the law, I will go in to see the king. If I must die, I must die. Let's just soak up the courage of Esther in this moment. Who is she trusting? Who is she leaning on in this moment where her faith is under fire? She's leaning on the Lord. She's gathering everybody together to fast and pray. She understands the importance of the calling that's been placed on her life. So Mordecai went away and did everything as Esther had ordered him. All right, Esther chapter five now. On the third day of the fast, Esther put on her royal robes and entered the inner court of the palace just across from the king's hall. Um, quick note here. Can you imagine the butterflies that were just swarming in Queen Esther's stomach? Okay, here we go. The king was sitting on his royal throne facing the entrance. When he saw Queen Esther standing there in the inner court, he welcomed her and held out the gold scepter to her. So Esther approached and touched the end of the scepter. Then the king asked her, what do you want, Queen Esther? What is your request? I will give it to you even if it is half the kingdom. And Esther replied, 
If it please the king, let the king and Haman, remember the enemy of the Jews, that's Haman, come today to a banquet I have prepared for the king. The king turned to his attendants and said, tell Haman to come quickly to a banquet as Esther has requested. So the king and Haman went to Esther's banquet. And while they were drinking wine, the king said to Esther, now tell me what you really want. What is your request? I will give it to you even if it is half the kingdom. Look at the favor God has given to Queen Esther. Esther replied, this is my request and deepest wish. If I have found favor with the king and if it pleases the king to grant my request and do what I ask, please come with Haman tomorrow to the banquet I will prepare for you. Then I will explain what this is all about. Haman was a happy man as he left the banquet, but when he saw Mordecai sitting at the palace gate, not standing up or trembling nervously before him, Haman became furious. However, he restrained himself and went on home. Then Haman gathered together his friends and Zeresh, his wife, and boasted to them about his great wealth and his many children. He bragged about the honors the king had given him and how he had been promoted over all the other nobles and officials. Then Haman added, and that's not all. Queen Esther invited only me and the king himself to the banquet she prepared for us. And she has invited me to dine with her and the king again tomorrow. Then he added, but this is all worth nothing. As long as I see Mordecai the Jew just sitting there at the palace gate. So Haman's wife, Zeresh, and all his friends suggested Set up a sharpened pole that stands 75 feet tall and in the morning, ask the king to impale Mordecai on it. When this is done, you can go on your merry way to the banquet with the king. This pleased Haman and he ordered the pole set up. Woo, it's a cliffhanger here. This incredible story is far from over and we're going to pick it up again on Monday. Next time, it's Joy Bombs in the Psalms. Till then, you are loved. Thank you so much for listening to the Bible for Busy People. If you need prayer or you're ready to go a little deeper in your faith, we've posted some resources for you in our show notes. We'd love for you to share this podcast with a friend and leave us a review. It helps us reach even more people with the hope of Jesus. This podcast is part of Purposely, a podcast network designed with practical podcasts to help you find and live in God's purpose for your life. Find more podcasts that will recharge you at onpurposely.com. Dot com.